Tyg, how's the preparations going? It's going well, yeah. Uh, flat out. Flat out now, so... Um, busy, busy. Uh, e good. England at the weekend. Um, what's the mentality of these warm-up games, Tyg? Because there's a need for them, obviously, and there's a need to play um, at your at your top level. Um, but then there's also the risk of injury and, and of course, you know, other other things that could happen, suspensions. So how do you approach them? Uh, like you don't worry about injuries or suspensions. Um, I suppose you just want to perform as well as you can. You understand that, um, you know, it's the first hit out for a lot of lads, but you still want to play well. You know, it's pre-season ones are, are different where, you know, you're not in World Cup yet and load is still high during the week. You might not necessarily be a, a very typical test match week you might have a little bit more in the schedule etc in terms of gym or condition or what have you so um but that doesn't take away our expectation of performing well um is the the, the hard thing what you mentioned there that it is pre-season and yet in a couple of weeks time you've got to be ready to go for a world cup yeah we're trying to hit the ground running you know what i mean it's you don't view it that way i don't think as a player you know you prep as much as you can like a normal test week because it is a test match um, and it is important to us so I think you, you hold yourself up there you hold yourselves to the standards maybe you set in the past or the way you played in the past and, and try to get better you know we've had a good block together during this pre-season um, I've been working hard on on little parts of our game and trying to get better so you want to see that out there at the weekend Does the memory of what happened in 2019 in a warm-up match at, at Twickenham um, does it remind you what can go wrong if you lose that bit of momentum going, in, going into a tournament? Nah, not particularly. You, know, it's, you can dress up however you want in hindsight, really. Um, you know, we'd come from a very tough training week in Portugal. We probably had a massive amount of rugby under our belt. and um, you know, That England seed team were you know, um, well put together and they put a good, um, a good bait on us, to be fair. How much um, is the memory of what went wrong the last time, how much does that play into your preparations and your, the psychology around this Ireland squad coming into the tournament? Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I know there's a fair few players there and maybe it is in the back of your head, but it's not something we talk about. You know, it's a totally different team. I think rugby, if you look at rugby four years ago and you look at rugby you know, globally, how teams are playing, the trends in the game. You know, it's a totally different game than it was four years ago. And, um, you know, you just have to move on. You have to move on. Yeah, there's a few lessons there, but I like to think we're in, you know, a different place going in. Um, the place you are is number one in the world. Um, I haven't hit an awful lot of markers coming into this last year and a half or so between winning down in New Zealand, beating the Southern Hemisphere teams and winning the Grand Slam. Um, is the key to keep moving forward for you guys then? Yeah, look, I, I, <laughs> I generally don't have no clue how that world ranking <laughs> works and people move up and down and how it works, I have no clue. Um, look, we just want to get better. Genuinely, we want to get better. We want to see, you know, where we can bring this um, team and, you know, it's, it's on the individual as well. Where do you want to bring your game and how does it all feed in and mix together and uh, come out on the pitch? So. We just work on ourselves. We work on ourselves, yes. Um, we've had good results in the past. We have a good bank there to lay, um, you know, I think a rational sense of confidence in. But again, it's, it's what you put out in the next game because you just have to prove it all over again. Can I ask you, aside from personal and maybe you know, Irish um, professional uh, memories, just as a, whether as a kid or as a fan watching, Rugby World Cup memories, what stands out to you? What's a moment? that you can remember watching and that's uh, like the first one I was in primary school in 07 I remember the 07 one and um, you know watching on TV and you probably don't really understand but you knew they were struggling a small bit in some of those games um, and then 11 I remember the Australia game was obviously a huge game um, I'm not sure I was involved in 15 then you know mm. in terms of like watching them as uh, the, the the big moments in, in in whether it's you know Johnny Wilkinson or you know back in the day people might talk about the South African 95 is there any moments like that you remember as a, just as a fan I, I was three in 1995 so <laughs> not so much I remember England win the World Cup um, I remember that I don't remember a whole lot about it eight years of age you know I remember the 
they drop goal to win it. Talk to me about 2015 then, coming off the bench in a World Cup at Wembley. Um, pretty unique uh, experience for your first taste of World Cup uh, action. What do you remember of that? Of that? Um, yeah, just being mad, you know what I mean? It's, it's the thing about World Cups and, you know, our fans, our people, they travel and just, I suppose the whole 2015 World Cup, I know it's, it's Wales, it's, it's relatively easy to get to, um, but just the amount of fans and the amount of green and the noise and um, particularly those games in uh, the Millennium Stadium were just amazing. I had a French last pool game. Um, and there was a chap, you know, it was 22. I had, you know, two caps going into a World Cup. I had no real right of being there, really. Um, Marty Moore got injured and I was covering loose head and, and, and tie head as the fifth prop. So, um, you know, it was a real kind of soak it all in kind of a moment. And, um, you know, a, a kind of grown up moment when you're thrown into... Um, you know, a team like that with such, you know, leaders at the time and, um, you know, just trying to figure your own kind of path through rugby and professional rugby. 2019, you talked about the, the experience of the team, but just as an individual, it strikes me that what, every time you line out for Ireland for the anthem is a huge moment, but for a World Cup, it is that, that bigger stage, that global stage, and you have those you know, always, wherever it is in the world, a huge Irish presence there. You're also where you're playing for the people back home watching and your own family and the people that you that supported you growing up. Th those must be huge moments for you as an individual. Yeah, of course, because uh, it means a lot to me. Um, you know? Does the, it, it, it's an incredibly uh, passionate sort of feeling um, when you line up to clean uh, up. Yeah, it is. Up. You know what I mean? It's, I, I never take it for granted. Um, I don't think it's ever something you can get sick of if it's your first time or um, it's the last time you do it. You're never sick of doing it. It's, it's amazing. Mm. It really is amazing. Talk to me, you, you said something interesting a few weeks ago about uh, the, the environment that Andy Farrell's created in this squad. You mentioned the fact that there's, there aren't social hierarchies, so you as an experienced player are not necessarily listened to more or maybe under, may not understand that correctly, but everybody has a voice within the group. Is that fair? Just explain how that works within the group. Uh, well, if, if you have a view or you think something about you know, the environment or the way we're playing, the way we train, you see something in training and you think it'll make us better as a team or as a group or whatever, you know, it's, it's expected to just say it. You know what I mean? Sometimes the most selfish person in the room is, who's, is someone who thinks something and doesn't say it because it can make a difference. And, you know, that's, that's where we're at. That's what we're trying to get better at. It's what we're trying to drive. And we just want to be better, you know what I mean? And um, we just want to feel, or people to feel, no matter where they lie in the squad in terms of caps or whatever age, that you're important. You're here because you're a good rugby player and at, let's add to it. Mm. Is that what success would look like? Because it, tri it strikes me that everybody wants Ireland to do well to get into the latter stages and potentially as, as one of the contenders to win it. But you know, you've got a very hard group, very hard side of the draw. Is it about improving as players and, and maximizing your ability and, and look back and, and what happens happens? Yeah, and just being proud of the way you play. You know what I mean? If you're you know, put your, your best out there and see where it takes us. And keep trying to get better and what more can you ask for? be proud of it and you know every time we try to play or we play <laughs> we don't try to play rugby um you just want people to f associate with us you know what i mean that we're trying hard we're giving it all that means something to us and and playing in front of our people or people watching at home no matter where they are in the world because irish people are scattered all across the globe that they can be proud of us and to see you know what we're trying to do in the jersey um, just to wrap up then, I think you're, there must be about half a dozen of you that got married this summer, is that right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> so we're sending over a squad of old married men over there with the, the, the pipe and slippers. Um, are you all mature, uh, sensible married men now after that? I'm not sure, there's plenty of <laughs> other lads as well, um, driving the crack there as well. But uh, yeah, no, it's great. You know, um, it's a lot of us in the kind of same age bracket that get you kind of same stage in life and we've come up through the ranks together. So. You know, it's good. Is it a happy camp? Yeah. People yeah. get on well. Yeah, no, they do. Genuinely, they do. And look, we spend so much time together, um, particularly over World Cup pre-season. Hopefully looking forward to the World Cup is important. It's really important that, you know, you can relax, you can switch off, you can have the crack. You know what I mean? That you get on well. It's important. 
one of your colleagues said you're, you're often the DJ when it comes to the music, is that right? Ish, ish. Um, it depends, it really depends on the gym. I'm connected up to that, the Bluetooth for some reason, lads just trying to tune. Coffee mornings, um, ish. If the lads want a few tunes, I'll throw it out. What? James Ryan fancies himself, Sanam. What's the tune to get the lads going in the gym in the morning? Uh, I don't, I just put on little sets, you know, SoundCloud sets. Soundcloud bangers, the lads call it, but it's usually something mashed together. Our SNC, um, one of our SNC, head of SNC, Nick Winkleman, he's a DJ, he has, uh, he's played all over now, but he has a load of sets up on Soundcloud, so if you're looking for a set to play in the <laughs> gym now, move air, M-O-V-E-R-E. <laughs> He has, he has a set dedicated to us, the lads are listening to him in gym at the mouth, so tip away if good, you're... Good recommendation. Yeah. Last one then, Tyg, all the build-up, all the column inches, all the talk, and it's, it goes on for years now for a World Cup build-up. Are you absolutely raring to go? Yeah, look, we have a bit to get. You know, we're looking forward to this weekend. Um, I think it's been on the horizon, or when you're a professional rugby player and you're playing international rugby, it's always on the horizon. Um, uh, World Cups, Lions Series, they're, they're kind of, you know, they're always there and what you're building towards. So, of course, yeah, we've put in a lot of good work and we're looking forward to stepping into it. We wish you all the best. No worries, thank that you very much. Tight. Thanks, William. Everyone.